Now, looking at the use of artificial intelligence in education as an industry um, is, of course, a major focus of this course. And what I'd like to start off with is looking at a UNESCO report around the implications of AI on education. Now, this is looking at it at a policy level. So looking at the decisions that need to be made around the uses of AI in education and the considerations that we need to take into account um, for various aspects of the use of artificial intelligence in educational um, environments and settings. So there are a wide range of different approaches that we can explore around the use of AI in education. And this report will take you through some of those and allow you to ex um, explore some of the issues, such as the issue around gender. Um, if AI systems have been trained for one particular gender or another, um, or indeed if one gender has a greater affinity with utilizing AI systems or others, it may introduce greater inequities in that aspect of education. So there are a whole range of policy level concepts that need to be explored around the consideration of artificial intelligence in education. Um, so have a look at some of those uh, and some of the challenges needed to achieve the goals of um, universal education and equity in education and the big picture um, challenges of education that may be assisted by AI, but also in some cases may be hindered by AI. So we'll discuss some of those issues in the tutorial, but read through the report and focus in on the particular policies that have an impact upon your own circumstances or your own areas of interest. And we'll explore those in the tutorial. Now, I've also given you a few specific examples, such as um, personal tutors. We were talking about the idea of robots being evolving into um, assistance for children. But even if it's their mobile phone or their computer, having an AI on that that they can interact with and talk with and chat with and ask questions of and have it answer in a system and have it learn about the specific areas of interest and ways that that child learns most efficiently and effectively will be a big change in education. Um, there's also a concept of ambient informatics. This is the idea where computers are going to be everywhere. Now, some would say they already are, but that's only going to increase. Um, we'll have more and more cameras detecting what's happening around them, watching ourselves, um, collecting data on our own interactions. We may have brain interfaces and a whole range of other technologies that are going to increasingly permeate computer systems and the collection of data and the sharing of data and the use of that data in all aspects of our lives. Now, when we go driving, we have systems that will detect whether or not we speed or whether or not we have a mobile phone being operated or increasingly whether or not we're um, under the influence of alcohol or drugs or feeling tired. And this is all being done with remote cameras watching drivers as they drive past. We also now will have cameras in our cars as we have automated um, driving systems. And so they'll all feed into data systems. So the world is being infused with massive amounts of data on everything that we do. And that is all being used in various ways to improve um, various aspects of our lives. It can also be used in some commercial ways, but in a positive way, it can also be used towards improving humanity. Now, another aspect in education, of course, is assessment. And the idea of having automated assessment and having AI systems um, support assessment processes, particularly in the essays. Now, previously we've had um, systems to automate uh, multiple choice quizzes for quite a while now, um, probably 30 or 40 years, where we can have computerized systems that can mark uh, multiple choice questions. But the idea of being able to mark essays and more complex student responses to assessment tasks is relatively new. And that, again, is going to influence greatly how things occur in schools. 
one of the biggest aspects is going to be around adaptive learning where we use all of this ambient informatics, all this information that's being collected about learners and use it to uh, modify the instructional material that's provided them, modify how we teach, the lessons we teach, the resources we use, the video clips we use, and eventually down to individualizing that to particular students um, as AI systems can provide us with more efficiencies around teaching and generate those resources for us. So this idea of adaptive learning is really taking off now with the technologies that are supporting it. And we'll be moving into anytime, anywhere um, education, whereby students will be able to use the mobile learning, um, remote learning processes with their adaptive learning processes and their AI chatbots and all the rest. And learning will be able to occur whenever they need to and wherever they are. Much less so where we've at the moment, where we gather people together because of the efficiencies needed by having an, a teacher as their instructor. If they can use any device as their instructor, that opens up a whole new model of education. And I've given you a couple of little video clips to look at and some technologies which are dating very quickly now. Um, Quizlet was an adaptive learning quiz system and the shift to marking um, essays and other assessment in Australia through our national testing process, is what's called DATLAM, um, has been very much in the news over the last few years. Um, that sort of dropped off a little bit in importance now as uh, generative text has sort of overtaken the agenda to a large extent. And all assessment now is being um, considered in terms of its relationship to automated marking rather than just specific um, examples of assessment. So speaking of generative text and chat GTP type um, systems, I've given you some different ways that we can utilize chat GTP in an educational context. So using it as a possibility engine, so generating lots of ideas, brainstorming, uh, using it as a Socratic opponent. So talking to it and arguing with it and seeking to get feedback on your arguments and seeing what it thinks about various arguments. Um, using it as a collaborative coach and having it understand um, the difficulties that we're having. So explaining to it um, the challenges you might be having in understanding a particular problem and having it provide responses that can assist in your understanding of various concepts or keywords or terminology that's being explored in the learning context. Being what's called the guide on the side um, in terms of asking it to generate um, content and activities for you to do that will assist with your learning. So if, for example, you're trying to learn more about um, building a chatbot, asking ChatGTP to provide you with some guidance on how to build a better chatbot. Um, so using it as an assistant as a, a tutor or as a teacher um, and directing it with prompts to do so. Uh, leading into the idea of being a personal tutor, particularly when you ask it a series of questions and it can learn based upon previous questions and interactions you've had, what you're thinking about and how to adapt um, the responses that it provides to what it understands you're trying to um, learn or understand yourself. Being a co-designer around products, so um, an essay is one example, um, having it co-design and work with you in creating an essay, but that doesn't have to be an essay. It might be an artistic work. It might be a, a piece of music. It might be a, a new um, football game. Whatever the curriculum area, um, an AI system can assist in the learning processes that might be incorporated into that task. I'm using it as an exploratorium, just trying to come up with new ideas and um, ways of doing things. So again, focusing on that brainstorming element, but potentially adding in some data. So it might be that you're trying to create a, a story and you've done a whole lot of pictures and animations and uh, drawings about it, um, showing that to ChatGTP, having it analyze that, 
ChatGTP can't quite do that, but some of the other AIs are able to analyze images. And using that to then generate new ideas and new material. Um, using it as a study buddy. Um, so help, as you get stuck with problems, using it to help you um, overcome various elements and reflect upon the learning material that you're engaging with. Using it as a motivator. When you get, uh, particularly things such as um, writer's block. So if you're stuck and tell AI, tell the chat GTP, I'm stuck for ideas. This is what I need to do, but I can't, I can't think of a way of approaching it and having it generate ideas and prompts and in ways of overcoming that particular blockage. And then using it as a dynamic assessor. You've created something, asking it for its opinion. Um, is this a good piece of writing? How could it be improved? Looking at the criteria you're meant to be achieving with your um, study. Based upon this criteria, how would it rate um, this piece of work? Having it provide um, reflection upon the quality of the work that's being produced. So all of these different techniques can be used by ChatGTP to improve student work. So it helps if we look in a little bit more detail about the different types of chat GTP or large language model um, applications. And there are seven main types. First of these is to generate. So we give it the start of something and it will continue with that, which is essentially the main function of generative text. Uh, and large language models being used for that generative text process, chat GTP, um, things like that. So I've given you some different ideas, such as writing some course materials, developing question and answer quizzes, but you give it some prompts to start with, and it will then finish the task. You can ask it to summarize. So giving it chunks of text and asking it to summarize the key points. And indeed now it can also summarize video and other systems can summarize video and other um, things other than just text. But providing a succinct summary of the main points, it's very effective at doing that. Asking it to rewrite. So looking at how to improve. Um, so taking a piece of text and restructuring it and reformatting it to improve its grammar or the way it reads or um, the tone that it has, and various other elements that you could incorporate into a rewriting process. Uh, extracting information from text. So giving it a whole lot of text and asking it to extract. So it's a little bit like summarizing, but you may be after some really specific um, elements. Uh, so maybe it's every, where has your name been mentioned in a transcript from a meeting? And what were the tasks that you were assigned to do? So looking at a whole long meeting transcript and drawing out what you were meant to do based upon your association of your name with the task in relation to that. Uh, looking for key phrases, um, creating metadata is another area to be in educational technologies that's useful. Then you can use it to search through text and find specific things within a body of text. So looking for particular ideas or um, maybe when a person has been mentioned or a particular historical event has been mentioned. A little bit like a Google search, but related to much more specific text rather than the whole internet. From that, we can then use an idea called clustering. So we can search for things and then we can relate similar things together. Um, so we can give it some text and identify for example, the, the four main ideas uh, in the text and, and the um, associated points to each of those four ideas. So it will search through the data and um, put into categories various aspects of that data, of the text in this case. And that can lead then into classification. Classification is where we know what we want to actually um, sort into. So I can say, okay, I want to sort all the references to um, boys and all the references to girls in this set of documents uh, and will classify them into those two sets. Um, and there could be a whole range of other things that you could classify and I've given you some examples around that. And these 
um, seven different approaches can be then done in combinations, such as creating a chatbot that will classify things and then rewrite them and look for the similarities with um, various elements to make it a much more interactive chatbot than if it was just doing um, one of those elements. Um, and I've given you some other examples of using classifications and searching together to try to um, work out what you're really interested in in your chatbot session, um, which can go further than just looking at keywords. It can look at your intent. And then the final example I give is looking, say, for rec recommendation systems. So looking at all the books that a student has read from the library data and using that to recommend new books for that child to read um, by extracting information from existing texts and identifying whether or not they match the books that um, the child has read previously. So these are some educational applications and we'll explore these in the tutorial.